TCI is brought to you by TaylorMade Stallion Unbridled Song, producing top songs year after year, including 13 grade one winners. Visit unbridledsong.com. Welcome back to TCI, your inside track to the Triple Crown. I'm John Siegel alongside Joel Cunningham. Joel, before we start the show, I can't help but notice, man, you're carrying some extra hardware these oh, days. Yeah, I got a wedding ring, John. You know, we had a beach wedding this past weekend. My lovely wife, Lindsay, uh, selected a great location. It was a beautiful time. The only problem was it was on Preakness weekend. But anytime you do the beach weddings, you you know, you kind of have to sacrifice on dates a little bit. But rest assured, I watched the Preakness Stakes. I held up the wedding to do so, but I watched the Preakness Stakes. And uh, we will be at the Belmont Stakes on June 9th. So looking forward to that. All right, man. Well, congratulations. But Thank enough you. with this wedding stuff. We got to talk about <laughs> Stay the on Triple point. Crown, man. We right. have the first... This is the first opportunity for a Triple Crown winner since 2008, Joel, and I think we have a real contender. Well, John, our show is Triple Crown Insider, so this is what we've been waiting to talk about. I mean, a horse like I'll have another going for that elusive Triple Crown. It's been 33 years. You mentioned 2008. Big Brown tried to do it. He was odds on. He was clearly the best three-year-old that year. I mean, he towered over that group, but he had more of a miler type pedigree, John. And you know what? Racing, I think, got to him. It was a hot day. I was there that day. And uh, it was certainly disappointing. There was a whole shoe, you know, scandal there with him maybe losing a shoe. But the bottom line is, you know, he totally emptied out in that race. Was almost right. pulled up in the stretch. So he didn't handle it like many haven't handled it. Well, I'll have another handle it. I'll tell you what. That Preakness performance to me was a special performance. It was the first time that I really thought this horse was more into the special category. He really impressed me with the way he ran by Bodie Meister late. And I'll tell you what, when Doug O'Neill talks about how good his cardiovascular system is and the fact that he doesn't get tired and you look at the stamina and his pedigree, he might be set up as good as any horse since affirmed that has won the first two legs to win that Triple Crown. Well, you mentioned how special his Preakness performance was. Take me to the Twin Spires TV race replay and take me through the stretch. Tell me about the race. Yeah, Jason, roll the footage here. I mean, you see him turn over home. I mean, Bodie Meister, he runs a good 10 to 12 lengths slower than he did in the Derby when you look at that half mile fraction and three quarter fraction. And I thought Bodie Meister fires here. A lot of people thought the inside part of the track wasn't where you wanted to be, John. But if you look at him, he's got good head carriage here. He's in a good rhythm and he's firing. And I'll have another makes up three or four lengths here and just runs him down. They're nine lengths clear of the rest of the field. This is a legitimate race, John, right. and a legitimate winner. I mean, I was really impressed with the way I'll have another kicked it in here. And I'll tell you what, you go look at the speed figures. Bodie Meister, he not only didn't bounce coming out of the Derby, he ran back to his Arkansas Derby performance basically across the board. So here's a horse that won the Arkansas Derby by 10 Okay, right. ran better than Alternation did that that weekend in the in the Oakland Handicap. If you want to compare them to the older horses, I think did the same thing. Ran a lot faster race than the Pimlico Special that Alternation won over a good field the day before. He ran his race, John, and he just got beat by a horse that's better than him, in my opinion. Well, I'll have another now has impressively won the Kentucky Derby and then gone on to win the Preakness. But Joel, he will not have Bodie Meister in the Belmont. Everybody yeah. wants the affirmed Aladar rematch. Not going to have it. But listen, don't just hand in the Belmont. There's some tough competition in here, including Union Rags and Dullahan. Well, the thing that makes the Belmont so hard to win, John, especially for a horse going for the Triple Crown, and the reason we don't see it very often is you don't get a break. You know, two weeks back from the Derby to the Preakness, and it's two winning efforts. Now you have to go three weeks back, probably going to be hot, another hot day in New York, and you have to face fresh competition. You know, I'll tell you what, I'll have another's not scaring off anybody. I mean, we talked about how deep and how good this 3-0 crop is. You mentioned Union Rags and Delahan now coming in fresh from their Kentucky Derby performances. Delahan's a horse that didn't get beat much in the Derby. Now he gets to come in fresh with more rest than I'll have another. I'll have another ran a new top in the Preakness Stakes. He'd never run that fast in his life. So uh, he will be odds on. He wasn't the favorite in the Derby, wasn't the favorite in the Preakness. Right. He'll now be odds on to win the Triple Crown against probably a dozen in here with some pretty quality depth. Be interested to see how he stacks up. Well, we're going to break down all the competition and look at those horses. But before we go, it's interesting to note, Dullahan and Union Rags both get rider changes. Yeah, for different reasons. Obviously, personal problems with Kent DeSormo and Dullahan. They've switched to Javier Castellano there. Uh, but, you know, you mentioned Union Rags. He is the X factor in this race, in my opinion. Well, actually, he and Painter, Painter being the horse that Zayat Stables and Bob Afford are going to run instead of Bodie Meister, another talented horse that we'll get into next week. But when you talk about Union Rags, I mean, for me, coming into the Derby, he was the fastest horse. Obviously disappointed, as he did in the Florida Derby. I really think that John Velasquez fits him so much better, John. We talked about how laid back this horse is. I mean, he's just kind of a big horse that 
just does what he has to do, right? Well, a finesse rider like Julian just doesn't seem to fit him. I think he needs an aggressive rider, a horse that'll, a jockey that'll put him into the race, right. clip off those 24 quarters, and then when they turn for home, he doesn't have a disadvantage. He doesn't have, you know, gap to close into. Now it's just, is he good enough? Is he as good as I'll have another and the other horses there turning for home? So I like the rider change. I think an aggressive rider will really move up Union Rags. Well, Johnny V can close with the best of them. That's and he knows sure. Belmont. That's true. Well, one thing for sure, Joel, this is going to be exciting couple of weeks. I'm looking forward to next week's show talking about these contenders and new shooters. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you come back next week. As we mentioned, we're going to give you an up-close look at the Belmont Stakes. Thank <laughs> you.